let's talk about sticky footers. Sticky footers is a common design pattern that you'll find. Now I've got on this web page here just three elements. I've got a header, a main, and a footer. This is just basically the default display, top to bottom, left to right. That's how it's rendering this stuff on my web page. And I've set the min height on the body to 100% of the view height, but that doesn't change where things are positioned. It's just saying, okay, the body element comes all the way down to the bottom. What I want to do is I want to take the footer and I want to have it sit at the bottom here. But I don't want to always just have it sitting at the bottom because, here, let me uh, add a few more paragraphs on here. Let's see if I add five more paragraphs with lorem ipsum text. Okay, content is down at the bottom. My footer, uh, sorry, sorry, the content of my footer is down at the bottom below all the other content. I don't want to just take this and push it up so that when I'm at the top of the page, the footer's sitting over top of this content. That's not what we're trying to achieve here. I want the footer to be below the content. I need to be this, I need to have this gap still appear here at the bottom. And if the content is smaller than the page, I want it to sit at the bottom. That's what a sticky footer is. So let's just undo that. So here we are. Let's um, go back. There we are. Okay. I want to first move this down to the bottom. Now I'm going to do this in two ways. First of all, I'm going to do it with a backward compatible way, and then I'm going to show you how to do it with CS Grid. So a backward compatible way. What we do is we take the containing element. Now I could have a div that wraps around these elements, or I can just target the body, and we set it to position relative. Then the footer, we make it position absolute. Okay, now it's cut off here because I've made a position absolute. We can now set it to width 100, 100%, 100 VW, whichever you like. And now we want to take it and we want to put it at the bottom of the page. Now, the width I'll leave off for the second, but um, this is the main thing that we want to do. We want to say bottom zero. That's what's going to hook this to the bottom of the page. The bottom edge of the footer is going to be stuck against the bottom edge of the page. Positioned correctly. Now, we can put that width back in if we want. 100%, 100 VW, whatever it is. We now have it positioned. So let's go try it now with those other paragraphs. So we'll put the five paragraphs with the lower MIPSUM text back in. Okay, so it's not sitting here now. It's pushed down. But it is cutting off this text. It's actually sitting over top of the text. If you come down to this last one, we can see and uh, uh, update and this uh, Delora there, right there. This is where it's cutting it off. So this content is actually sitting underneath the footer. What we need to do is we need to make sure that the bottom creates enough space for this at the bottom. So we take the height of this plus the padding that we want to have between this content and the footer. So our main element, padding, bottom, and we're going to set it to the same as this plus the padding. So let's say, um, let's make the height of this three REMs, and then we'll add one more REM for padding at the bottom. So we'll say padding bottom four, and then we'll set the height of this to 3 REM. There we are. Now, this creates the space at the bottom of main. So from the bottom edge of here to the bottom of the page, that's 4 REMs. Or let's uh, bump it up. We were a little bit underestimating that. There we are. So from the bottom edge to the bottom of the page, that's 5 REMs that we've created. And now, this is 4 REMs high. So it fits within that 5 REM space. And that's the backward compatible way of making a sticky footer. Position relative on the containing element. Position absolute with bottom on the bottom piece, the footer, typically. Then set the height and put the padding on the element that comes before the footer to this plus whatever amount of padding you want, want, want to have between the content of these two elements. All right, so that's the backward compatible way. You want to do this with CSS grids, 
Well, we can do it in a, in a progressive enhancement way where this is the default. And then if the browser supports CSS grid, then we're going to go on and add the CSS grid version. So let's do that. So at supports display grid, then we're going to overwrite some of these properties. So for the body, what we want to do is put that back to position static for the main. We're going to fix that padding back to what it was padding bottom one REM. So that's where it was the footer. We need to, well, we can leave that in position. Absolute. That's the one that we need to get rid of position is going to be static as well. Okay, so now it's doing its normal thing, just top to bottom. So we've kind of undone the work that we did up here, put it back to what the page normally would do. Now, if I remove my last bunch of paragraphs here, that's good enough. We can see now that the footer is not sitting at the bottom. I'll pull one more out just to really illustrate this. Okay. So there's my content. There's my footer sitting below the main element. It's not stuck to the bottom. We want to achieve this with display grid. So display grid goes on the containing element. And then we want to use grid template rows. We're going to define what the rows are. I have three rows. There's three children of the body, header, main, and footer. The header, I want its height to be whatever it automatically would get for my footer same thing automatic and then one fraction for whatever's in the middle this is the main content so there's the top there's the bottom size them the way they would normally be sized one fraction for all the content that's inside of here now we'll go back and we'll add some of those paragraphs back in And there we are still working as before. So you can see the display grid version, these two lines, really, that's all you have to do to make a sticky footer with the CSS grids. But we want to make sure that we're covering older browsers that don't support this because CSS grid is not everywhere. Um, it's in all the modern browsers, but you go back two years, there's quite a few browsers that don't support it. So we do it the old way. And then using at supports, you're not going to find any browsers that have support for at supports that don't support display grid. So this is the safe way of doing progressive enhancement where you're adding a little bit of CSS to use the new versions. All right. So hope that helps you out. Um, easy way to do sticky footers. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.